All right, here we go. Coaches out, trainers out. We got players only. Eat it. Two guests today. Well, one's kind of a guest. Scott Hartnell, how are you? <laughs> and we got I'm chemo great, teaming how are you? I'm good. Chemo teaming in with you. You guys neighbors? We neighbors. You couldn't do this in the same room? No, well, I asked Scott if you do the same room, but he said stay in your house. <laughs> yeah. He comes over too often and stays way too late most nights, so it's uh, it's nice to kind of keep our distance that way. <laughs> you guys, you guys use Uber though, right? You don't walk. There's no walking there, right? Those contracts. Play too many games to walk. Hey, if I look it out of this window, I can see him. <laughs> He's so close. I gotta see that. Turn the camera. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, well, thanks for coming on, Hartsy. Are you throwing an invoice at the NHL Network for this? A hundred percent. Yeah, this is valuable time uh, you, you're eating up here. It's a half day's pay, about right. Half day pay work with, <laughs> with a quad boxer. We're doing the quad box here, which is it's weird. I don't know where to look, but it's 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 working out I so far. My hands. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Do I get any money? No, no you made no, enough. No, no. You made right. enough. Yeah. All right, see ya. <laughs> <laughs> well, we want to, we do want to talk about this. is great that you two are on together because you played quite a quite a long time together, not just in Philly, right? You want to go, Scott, or me? Yeah, you go ahead. You're the guest. <laughs> well, you know, we I, I started '98 in Nashville, and and I think Scotty got drafted 2000, and since that moment, we were, you know, teammates in Nashville five six years, and then here in Philly with the Flyers, you know, six years. And on uh, top of that, we were roommates for six, seven years. So I know this guy pretty well. And uh, I would like to tell some stories, but maybe this is not the right time to do it. But uh, well, I can tell you I can tell you one thing. That boy, he likes to sleep. On the game days, he's a <laughs> four-hour game day nap. So he likes to sleep, that boy. Well, you did. You put us for, like, the perfect segue, like, what could you give us, obviously PG rated, as like your best roommate story you have of either one of each other? Like you can go first, Hartsy, and then Chemo can bury it, bury you after. Well, well, it's so funny, you know, kind of cell phones, how they've kind of, um, you know, progressed through the years, right? You can always call down to the front desk to get, uh, you know, a, a wake up call in the morning. So uh, I'd always call, or I, he'd always make me call, you know, for an 8:30, 9 o'clock wake up uh, of a game day, and. And his name was always first on the list. So they were all, always trying to uh, pronounce his name and they would screw it up. We're like, hello, Mr. T -t 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 Timonin, you know? And so anyways, I'm like, no, no, it's, it's not Timonin. It's T Tim Timonin, you know, just like stupid, <laughs> stupid names every time. So that's the, the one funny joke that, uh, you know, I'll always remember uh, getting in rooms with chemo for, for long years. And uh, yeah, you get to, you get to know a person really well when you, uh, you, you've been roommates for that long and, you know, know his family, love his family. And, Heck, I couldn't uh, be away from him. I had to move across the street from him as well. I love it. And Kimo, yeah, we, you gotta have you gotta have a you gotta have a good one for for Scotty. That's for <laughs> well, sure. Well, I got a lot of good ones, but like I said, PG. I can't tell you here. But well, uh, you know, we always we get in the room, and you know, he was like, "Let's watch a movie. I don't want to go out for dinner or be order room service and watch a movie." But for some reason, I always paid. That was me who was always. <laughs> paid, so. Well, your name was first. Yeah, well, I guess. I uh, I always had to pay, but when uh, the league changed, like everybody has their own rooms, Joe Thornton used to like, as soon as we'd land, he'd come knock on my door, come into my room, he'd order a movie, order room service, take a nap, and then he'd, <laughs> he'd leave and I'd, have, I'd pay the bill at the end of every road trip. Sounds like Scott Hardinow right there. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. You, Just, I, another, another funny story too, Kimo would be like, okay, what movie tonight? And he's like, oh, I've, I've never seen this one, uh, The Interpreter. And I'm like, I'm like, what? I'm like, oh, The Interpreter? <laughs> and uh, I, I always thought that was pretty funny. So uh, even oh. though we had the language barrier of uh, Finnish and, and uh, Canadian, uh, we always had a great time. <laughs> I wasn't happy when they decided to cut the roommates. At first, anyway, I was so paranoid about sleeping in, or I got lonely on the road. How yeah, did you I feel mean, when they had to cut roommates? When you, I mean, what, what year was that, by the way? The, I think it was after like, the lockout. It was no, it was like yeah, it was like fifteen. I think that's 12, what. 13, lockout. Yeah, we yeah, I think that's what we the big thing we won in in the CBA was that. I was like all bummed out. Was... <laughs> we accepted everything else. Own roommates on the road are good. <laughs> <laughs> Here's all our money, but we got our own room. <laughs> um, so you guys are involved with the Flyers alumni, right? You've 
I mean, I think you guys, I think of Flyers all the way. All the, I mean, I had a lot of battles with you guys. You got some Flyers alumni things coming up on the on the yeah. cooker here? Yeah, January 26th, uh, with the Flyers alumni are playing uh, versus the Boston Bruins alumni. And uh, you can get your tickets at uh, flyerscharities.com. And, uh, you know, always had battles, right, with the Rangers and the Penguins and, you know, Boston Bruins. We played them a couple couple times in the playoffs. One uh, specific comeback from when we were down 0-3 in the series, uh -huh. down uh, three games to zero in game seven. So uh, just some great vibes with that one. And, and yeah, all the money goes to the Flyers charities, uh, the Flyers alumni, and uh, they do some great stuff around uh, around the city of Philadelphia. And, and uh, yeah, looking forward to, to lacing them up. I, I was thinking, Akimo, I got to get him on the ice with me and my boy when we go skate. So uh, so he doesn't look too rusty out there. <laughs> we got to know, I, we got to ask about that comeback too. Like, I, w I actually went to some of those games because they were in Boston. Yeah. That playoff round, the Bruins are up 3-0. And we can take it back even further. Was that the same year that you beat us in game 82? It was, right? Yeah. Yes, yeah. It, yes, it was. Yeah. Oh, man. Yeah. Same year, 2010. Talk about that. How did you guys, I mean, I'm sure you've talked about it several times, but yeah. down 3-0, what was the vibe like in the room? Well, I, I felt like we were down 3 nothing, but we were still a better team. That's that's the uh, sense I got, and I think that it was the sense in the room too that we just go into the game four. We just need to get a little lucky there, and we got a little lucky there, and we get one win, and then we got in a row. But I felt like we were controlling the games, but we still lost, and we were down uh, down three nothing. But then we just needed one good game, and and we got back, and rest is history. I remember Gagne in that that series. I mean, so. Run. So good.